We want to speak life over you today. Every person listening, we want you to understand that no matter where you've been or where you might currently find yourself, it's not over. When God is in it, there is no limit. New breeze. Hope Church Lavington presents Half Time. All things are new. All things are new. All things are new. This week, divine favor and speed. We brought some friends along to just encourage you a little further. James Fortune. This is for someone right now. I know it's dark. Yes. Just be dark. It's not easy right now. This might be the heart. Locker room sermon number three is not a sermon. If you're waiting for a sermon today, I do not have one. But I have a prayer to make. Amen. And, and the title of this message is Divine Favor and Speed. Amen. Look at your neighbor and give them that Nigerian look and tell them Divine Favor and Speed. Amen. And, and I want to give a disclaimer. I want to give a disclaimer here because... Uh, I believe that God blesses, but I'm not so used to uh, preaching prosperity messages in, in, the, in, the, in the, you know, in the quotes, but any prosperity in quotes. I'm not so used to, um, I'm talking about prosperity, not that I don't believe in it, but, but today the Lord has uh, convicted me. I believe this is a word for all of us. Amen. This is a word for all of us, a prayer that we are going to make together. And I believe God is going to hear the prayers that we pray to him. Amen. Because his word says, without anxiety, make your requests known unto God. And one thing I love about the psalm that Pastor Victor has taken us through is, is this is David. David is a mighty man of battle. He had one of the meanest crew in this earth. These guys, I think one of them was equal to like a hundred men. But you see how he depended on God. And even in verse 12, he makes a powerful declaration that shows the real source of his success as a king. Because he says, for you, O Jehovah, will bless the righteous. Amen. You will favor your people. You will surround him with as a shield. You will surround him with favor as a shield. And, and I was doing my research, and the kind of shield that is being talked about here is not those shields like, that look like sufurias or the, or the top of a sufuria. But there are some shields that literally protect you from the head to the toe. Meaning that the favor of God will surround the righteous because God has decided to bless them. In fact, favor here is being referred to as a weapon of warfare. Amen. Can you imagine that today God has decided? Hallelujah, people. If you're with me, you're thinking this is your message, just wave at me because God is speaking to you today. Let's give the Lord a mighty shout of applause in advance because this is the day of favor. Amen. Tell your neighbor, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice. And I shall be glad in it. Tell your neighbor, this is the day of favor. And the day of speed. Because we are addressing our Father. God who owns cattle on a thousand hills. The oceans belong to him. The mountains belong to him. All silver and gold. He summons the storms. He summons the clouds. Mountains melt like wax before our God. Amen. Who is there like him? Our king of glory. And we are saying that this God, our Jehovah, meaning our savior, our deliverer, the one who protects us from every wicked scheme of the enemy, the one who keeps us in safety, the one who leads us to greener pastures, the one whom if we anchor ourselves near to, we shall never wither, but we shall always produce fruit in due season. That Jehovah will bless the righteous people. Amen. And maybe by chance, you're seeing the word bless the righteous. And you're thinking, am I righteous enough? Let me tell you, I'm not talking about our own righteousness. 
but I'm talking about the righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus. Because the Bible says that he is our righteousness. Amen. And as we stretch our faith to him, look to him. Remember, this is David. David, the man who slept around. David, the man who was full of weakness. But this same man has confidence to go before Jehovah and say, you are the God of all grace. And you, O oh God, will bless the righteous through Jesus Christ. And with favor, you will surround him with as a shield. Hallelujah. Shout, I am favored. Shout, I am favored. You can shout better than that, people. You know you need the favor of God. Shout, I am favored. Hallelujah. Give God a mighty, mighty round of applause. You see, this, this, is, not, this is not a sermon. This is a prayer. <laughs> I don't know if you can read my facial expressions, but David here sensed danger. Watch out, Ningoi. But he had sensed danger. And you know, there are times, let me now break it down to us. If you look at the bell curve of, of any man's progress in life, unless you are the child of a king or a president, but normally from the age of 20 to 40, that is the age of hustling. Amen. That is the age where no one cares. You have no credibility. You are not an expert in your field. You have just gotten a job. You're trying to work your way up. And, and it's as though, let me talk about us. And, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. And hopefully as I talk about myself, you shall also see yourself. Amen. But this is Pastor Brian right now. My dreams are greater than my resources. This is the truth. If you were to get into my mind right now, my friend, you would look at me and you will tell me to sing the song that says, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why? Because the size of my dreams are not equal to the resources that I have. So I'm always walking around, driving around with a feeling of inadequacy, even as I stand here in front of you. I have been a pastor in this church for now about three years. And I know I have not yet earned your credibility as a pastor. And I am not looking for it. You know why? Because I know I am young, and you're also young, and that's just how life is. Maybe when I have four kids the size of uh, myself, that's when you will say, Mzea me kam chalika chonjo. But now, I have to really, really work my way to earn your credibility. And it's okay. And you all like that in your offices. Because your boss is still looking at you and when you walk, it, when, when you walk into work, the first thing they say, or maybe you've heard them say this, they say things like, young man, when I was your age, how many of you have heard that phrase before? <laughs> So you know what I'm talking about. Eh? Maybe you thought by now, after Form 4, after getting that degree and that master's like me, you thought in three years you'd conquer the world. But you're still finding the world staring at you, saying, come on, show me what you got. But how many of you thought by now you'd be talking about three acres in Kamulu? five acres somewhere else because you looked at other men who were before you and you thought they were not wise because you thought ah with a salary like this you just save save you just keep keep and you make things you buy a house by the age of 33 but you find still yourself looking at adverts in the newspaper saying hey nazime panda <laughs> you have passion if there is one thing young men have is passion. Hey, if passion can, could be converted into money, my friend, you are a billionaire. You have energy. You can even be a generator for this church. If you were to just yani, hook you up to this building, you would light all the bulbs in this building. And even, yani, you have energy and passion. But the thing is, you feel as though it is not being put to use. 
it is like a mother with milk that she cannot you know inakuchoma it is your passion is key am i talking to somebody here in the building wave at me so that i know sio mimi peke yangu amen god is good this is a day of favor amen and it is a prayer it is not a prophecy amen you feel like you're always ready to go and actually if people were to look at you you are ready for success it's just that opportunity has not yet knocked on your door in fact let me say this i am sure that most of you who are working in those organizations those companies you are actually better than the position that you have been given you are actually more skilled than yani it is as though that organization is limiting your ability to move you you feel like you just want to burst the roof and become and be but the question is where and how or even worse when you have brains but no fees how many of you have been there you have ideas but no means skills but no real opportunity you have talents but no platform beauty but no spouse a house and a marriage but no children am i talking to somebody here today can we be real for a moment and just wave 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 and say this is me pastor and and we are praying together yes i can see some hands coming up lift them up high because there's a part in the bible where god says to a sick man he says stretch your withered hand but you know today i don't want you to come with a withered hand and when god asks you asks you to stretch it you're hiding it no we came to church because church is a hospital church is not a fashion show Church is where desperate people come to meet a God who is able to supply their needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. And this is the thing. Most of us are not discouraged. Maybe we know a way of dealing with discouragement. We are just frustrated because opportunity has not knocked on our door. Hmm. Some of us are just waiting for that one day when you will just get that platform and the world will be shocked today we are praying for divine favor people amen because i realized in the bible that people prayed for favor and god indeed gave them favor and as i was praying for this church the lord asked me to dare us today to believe that he can favor us do you know one day of favor is worth a hundred days of labor let me tell you if god visits you just once you are sorted for your whole entire life some of us have worked entirely hard from january all we need right now you see david understood warfare you don't you, david's problem was not strategy it was not soldiers it was not weapons all he was asking for is god the x factor now the x factor Foot, foot, uh, football fans i know you're here but when you're watching the battle of the titans between two major teams you know the match can go either way what matters is that x factor the favor of god i need the favor of god here today and i'm praying that god would favor us today because the bible says for you o jehovah will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him as with a shield hallelujah so as as i as i inform our prayers i want to talk about three things number one, the 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 description of favor then number two, we will look at the direction of favor and then number three, the distraction of favor and then we will conclude this service by making a prayer unto god and to the faithful god who never fails hallelujah he never fails hallelujah I need us because this is not a sermon. We are not learning here today. I say God never fails. I say that our God never fails. And if God be for us, who can be against us people of hope? For all things work for our good. Give the Lord a mighty round of applause. Amen. Hey. You know, favor is not fair. How many of you know that favor is not fair? Why were some made more beautiful than others? Why are some men more handsome than others? Why do some eat chips and they chuck bellies as though they are pregnant? And some eat chips the same quantity and even with more spice and they still look like Arnold Schwarzenegger the young or the junior. 
Favor. Amen. Let's look at the description. Favor simply is defined as preferential treatment. We have seen this numerous times in scripture where God has decided to favor those that he decides to favor. Preferential treatment. God picks you, singles you out, decides to lift you up above the rest. So let's look at what favor is. A, favor is when God selects you for something good among many qualified counterparts. For example, I want you to do this study for yourself. Go to the book of Esther, chapter 2 and from verse 15 to 17. They had a beauty pageant. All of these girls who qualified were beautiful. They were shapely. They looked mwah, fantastic, fabulous, gorgeous. But how comes Esther was singled out among all of them? Somebody say favor. I pray. This is my prayer for you today. I know there are many people who are more qualified than you are. Amen. I know there are people who are wanting to achieve the same thing that you want to achieve. I know there are people who want to do this. There is competition, basically. But my prayer for the people of Hope Church today, my prayer for you this week and forevermore, is that God may select you among many qualified counterparts. Somebody give the Lord a mighty praise. I, I don't care. I don't care. You go for that interview. And my prayer is that God would select you. There are people who are being lined up for a promotion in your organization. I pray that God may single you out. I know there are people being singled out for, for a scholarship. I pray that God may single you out. I know there are tenders somewhere on a table. I pray that yours may be, be singled out. Amen. That is my prayer for you. And I hope you have the same prayer today. Do we have the power of agreement in this church today? Ah, may the favor of the Lord be upon you. Give your neighbor a high five and tell your neighbor, may God single you out. This is what favor is. Favor is when a man is chosen for the position he is not naturally qualified for, especially among others that are far much better than him. Now, this is different. This is different. This is not just random selection. But unajua ukodau. Amen. You know very well, you've read the qualifications on the paper, and they are saying five years of experience, and you know this is your first job. I mean, where do they expect you to get experience anyway? Now, I want you to go before God today and tell God, si unajua sina degree. Because it is no secret. Do you know the God that we serve knows all about us? Amen. Si unajua hauna. He knows you have not worked anywhere before. He knows, yani, in fact, when you look at the way, some people will come to that reception with iPads and whatever pads they have and tablets. And sh I don't want to go there. And they will be flipping. Huh? Yani, and you, you have, I don't know if you know those people who have carried files for so long. Baka apa kwa edge in a bend. Have you ever seen those? Uh, <laughs> but God will favor you. Why not? Amen. I declare that God would single you out for favor in Jesus' mighty name. You remember David? Remember when David was being selected? In fact, he was not even in the scene. I pray that those qualifications that people have applied for can be put on hold. I pray that that CEO would sit down and say, I know we have done this uh, selection, but I'm not satisfied. There's somebody missing here. Hmm? And you know who that person is? You. Somewhere in Kawanguare listening to this message. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God's favor is upon you. You know, someone looked at that man and he told him, Hauna Mwingine, you have no child. And he said, well, there's one. You know when you're even lowering your voice, it means you're a little bit embarrassed. Well, kuna kamoja, sijui kama, lakini ita, ita, ita nani. Hmm? But that nani, that cornerstone, that, that stone that the builders rejected, hallelujah, has now become the cornerstone that is found in First Samuel chapter 16 and from verse 11 to 13. Hmm. Favor is when a man seeks the face of God in prayer. And his requests are granted. How many of you remember Jabez? 
Go to First Chronicles chapter 4. Hizo enda usome peke yako. But in First Chronicles, this man was birthed in pain. The mother named him after pain. Can we imagine that my name is Brian Uchungu Mbogwa? <laughs> Hear the laughter. That was the same laughter that this brother carried for years. In fact, it is as though his name was manifesting in his life. His life had become bitter. Why am I saying it was? Because he prayed that God may deliver him. He actually went to God as a man and said, Father, change my name today. Enlarge my territory today. Make me fruitful. Let me be a blessing and not a curse anymore. And I just want to say to somebody here today, you have been the black sheep of your home. In fact, when people go for family meetings, you are the one that is not asked a single question. When you go there, the party doesn't begin. But when your other brothers come, now the party can start. But let me tell you, today we are going to pray a prayer. And our Jehovah, our deliverer is going to hear us. And from today I believe that he's going to change your name from pain to favor. Hallelujah. Give God a mighty round of applause. Amen. Favor is when a man receives kindness from others as a result of God's hand upon his life. Hey, look at the life of Joseph. Donge. Can I even say donge? Eh? Look at your neighbor and tell you donge. donge. Joseph was blessed. In fact, this brother was blessed holistically. Mm, the brother was handsome. My friends, eh? He had straight figure. Not only physique, but he was intellectual. Not only intellectual, but whatever his hands touched, it flourished. Don't you hate such men? I always say this, and I've preached this many times, eh? but ladies, let me talk about men because it's men day. Cindy, men say, Ahu. But can you imagine if there's a sister in this church that the two of you like? And this brother, you know that you know he's more handsome than you. Ah, let's, that's not even a prayer point. You pray for favor because he's more handsome than you. Eh? Una joko down. Pimples in your zako. Men who me toka kusugua tu zilikuwa brown juicy, but say you may try. And when you look at yani ata ki feather ame kungoa. Maze una skia jebana. You know, mine za skia uchungu. You know, at times when you unajitetea kwa demu na zamambia, well, chalia kwa power, lakini niko nazo. But then, you know, having a fat wallet is good, eh, for the ladies. And I know I'm saying this, don't useme ati naenda sasa material, no, but it's true. Some men are very short, but here, they are very tall. And my friends, they can win the war. <laughs> eh? So you remember, inaitwa nini hiyo show, tujuane. There's a brother who really suffered. But let me not go there. You understand what I'm saying? And even if ikifika ni kuinua machuma, ameinua. Hmm? We umeinua, hapa uko sawa, lakini kitambi iko. Yeah, ko fiti mse. Hmm? Fiti. Ame kungua all angles. Tuseme hata muizi ya toke na muanzembio, anakushinda. What am I saying? Joseph was favored all round, all round blessing. And you know what, people? God can also favor you the same way. Amen. Because whatever was intended to harm you, I pray that it would be turned into your blessing. Amen. Whatever roadblocks people put on your way, I pray that they may become stepping stones for you to move on to the next level. Amen. Let them hate on you, but they are publicizing brand Jesus inside of you. Give God a mighty round of applause. I say this is not a sermon. This is a prayer. Amen. Let us look at the direction of favor. And I'll quickly just peruse over this so that we can find time to pray. But favor can go physical. All right? And I'm not just saying physical because it's a, a department by itself. But remember in John 5 to 9, there were people who were sick by the pool of Bethesda. They were all waiting for healing. But only one of them walked out with healing. Now I know you could have, be having somebody sick in your home today. Or you yourself could be sick. 
And this sickness is eating you up, eating your finances. In fact, it is even affecting your ability to be employed and to keep and maintain a job somewhere. Or maybe you're here and it is somebody else at home. You have to take breaks from work. Sometimes you have to take leave, compassionate leave, so that you can take care of that sick person. You know what, people? I'm not one of those prophets who has been casting out demons for years. But I'll tell you this. Today we are praying for healing. And I believe that God will heal diseases in this place in Jesus' mighty name. Because by his stripes we are healed. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen, amen. His, his, his favor can take a material direction. Look at five, Luke 5, chapter 1 and verse 7. Remember Peter. Now, Peter was among many fishermen. But that day, Jesus picked on his boat. Amen. This is before even he was called to be a fisher of men. But let me tell you, I wonder why Jesus never went to somebody else's boat. Now, that question we will never answer. Why? Because it is simply an act of God's favor. Today, I pray that God may enter your boat. I pray because I know you have been fishing and fishing. And I pray that when he comes into your boat, when he tells you to just dip your nets one more time, I pray that you may act in obedience because he will give you a big harvest. Hallelujah. Favor can also be marital. You know, the Bible says, interestingly, that he who finds a wife finds a good and obtains favor from, from the Lord. But I know there are people here who have been praying for spouses. I pray that God will bless you with a God-fearing man or woman. I know people have been praying for children. I know God gives children, even to those that are barren. Amen. Let us not fear to claim his promises. Let us not fear to pray because he is a God who answers prayer. His, his favor goes the intellectual way. Look at Daniel. Daniel was a convict, a product of Kodiaga or Kameti. These guys were put at, a, at one place and the king asked that a few, you know, people who look like they can work, people who look like they know what they're doing, that they be gathered. And you know, out of all those, Daniel and his friends were singled out. And you know what? Everything that this brother touched prospered. In fact, he ended up becoming a prime minister in a foreign land. Amen. I'm telling you, you could be in a place where you don't belong. You could be up in a place beyond your level of culture or background. But God will still prosper you. Amen. I pray that he may bless and flourish the work of your hands. And then the last one, all-round favor. Now quickly, let's look at the destruction of favor. Because you see, favor can come upon your life, but it is so easy to destroy that same favor. And I will not even delve on this so much. But you people know that disobedience, sin, pride, prayerlessness, lack of faithfulness, godlessness will take away God's favor from you. Look at Saul. Saul enjoyed God's favor, but only for a moment. The day he became proud, God took his hand of favor away from him. Look at Samson. Samson did not die the kind of death that he ought to have died. But because of his pride, because of his godlessness, he ended up dying a blind man. Naaman was also among those who were favored. But due to pride, he was not able to maintain it. So I want to urge you, because God's favor will rest upon you today, understand the principle of maintaining the favor of God upon your life. Be righteous. Seek after the righteousness of God. Be a godly person. Be a prayerful person. Be a faithful person. Amen. And maintain the hand of God upon your life. 